everyone and welcome to the CBC Sports Hub. I'm Jacqueline Dory and today we're showcasing the Spelling Bee of Canada's 33rd National Championship. Now you might be sitting there thinking, spelling isn't a sport, but just wait. You'll see how intense these competitions can get. The Spelling Bee of Canada organization has been around since 1987 and since then over 50,000 students have had the chance to participate in regional and provincial competitions. And the end goal? Encouraging young people to expand their vocabulary, communication skills, and self-confidence in a fun and educational way. So let's figure out how this whole thing works. The participants are placed into three categories. Primary, which is made up for six to eight year olds. Junior, for students nine to 11. And intermediate, which is for 12 to 14 year olds. Students have been competing in regional events for the past six months. And now the top 24 in each category have spelled their way to the championships. With prizes, cash, and a big trophy on the line, there's a lot at stake. Now, every competition needs a little motivational speech and a good pep talk. So let's hear from the Minister of Innovation, Science, and Industry, Navdeep Baines. Navdeep Baines here, Canada's Minister of Innovation, Science, and Industry. And I'm so excited to welcome you all to the 2020 Spelling Bee of Canada. You've all worked so hard to be here learning hundreds of new words on top of all your regular chores and schoolwork. And I have to say, I'm so impressed by your commitment. Folks who know me know that I'm a huge sports fan and it's really great to see CBC Sports use their platform to stream this exciting competition virtually. We've all had a lot of adapting to do in this new digital world over the last year and I'm so glad we can still be together to celebrate your amazing achievements. First of all, let me just say how good it is that you're all here today. I know it's been a really tough year. Things have been different and I'm sure confusing for all of you, but you persevered and your hard work really paid off. And I know that kids across the country like you have missed out on a lot of things you're used to doing and it gives us a good reminder as government to keep striving to make sure you all have the tools you need to learn, grow, celebrate and play even when it's hard to be together. I'd also like to say a big thanks to the folks working at Spelling Bee of Canada for making this and other events across the country possible to help promote English literacy. In light of the challenges uh, we're facing today, you quickly adapted to make sure that even though we can do things the way we're used to, our kids can still participate in fun educational activities. And as a parent, I can't thank you enough for that. These events are so important. They remind us that even though we're spending more time apart, we still have our communities, our traditions, and these fun pursuits that help us learn and connect with others who share our interests and our competitive spirits. No matter who wins in your age category today, you all have so much to be proud of. When I think about the future of this country, I often think about my two daughters who are around the same age as you are. When I see their curiosity, their enthusiasm, and most of all their kindness, I feel so good about where we're heading together. And I feel the same way today, delivering this message to all of you. I want to wish you the very best of luck today and I'll be watching. Thanks everyone and congratulations once again. Thank you Minister Baines. So before we get to the first event, let's look at the rules. Number one, words are taken from the Oxford Dictionary. Two, a competitor can ask for the word definition, part of speech and use in a sentence prior to spelling. Three, a competitor must say the word capital when spelling a proper noun. And number four, a competitor may start over, but only if they ask, may I start again? But they cannot retrace the letters they've already said. A couple other things before we begin. Typically, a spelling bee would have everyone in person and contestants would be spelling these words on stage. But as we know, we can't do that right now. So this year's competition happens where everything in 2020 happens, on Zoom. So today, you'll see on the screen a moderator who will call on each contestant, 
the pronouncer, who will say each word, and the judge, who will let us know if the word was spelled correctly. Each competition has three main rounds. The first two include words that students have seen in advance and have studied for about a month. But the third round has words the students have never seen or heard before. And this is where you typically start losing competitors. The rounds continue until only two people remain and they spell it out for the title of champion. First up is our primary event with the six to eight year olds. These are the faces of the top 24 contestants that represent chapters from British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and many regions of Ontario, plus for the first time, Nova Scotia. Each person has already won their regional competitions in order to make it to the national championship. Now they have their chance to spell words like mandible, serene, and bandana. There are some really great kids in this group, like eight-year-old Harbin Kaur from Surrey, BC. She immigrated from India just two years ago and only spoke a little English when she arrived. But this year, she beat out 64 students in BC and won Best Junior Speller. Here's Harbin from round two. Contestant ready? Yes. Your word is marshmallow. Marshmallow. M A R S H M A L L O W. Correct. I really hope you're all giving Harbin a round of applause from home. Now we have our first ever contestant from Nova Scotia, eight-year-old Mariam Emran from Halifax, and they're going up against eight-year-old Jackson McGillivary from Carry the Kettle, Nakota First Nation in Saskatchewan. Here they are from round two. Contestant ready? Yes. Your word is premium. Premium. P-R-E-M-I-U-M. -E premium. That is correct. Contestant ready? Yep. Your word is implant. I-M-P-L-A-N-T. Correct. Great job, you guys. Well, all 24 students made it through the first two rounds, but eventually it came down to round five where five competitors were left. So let's pick up the competition there and round five with the final stages of the primary division. We will now begin the third round in the tiebreaker series. So up next, we have Keon from Chapter Ajax Pickering in Ottawa, Whitby. Contestant ready? Yes. Your word is fretfully. Fretfully? Fretfully? Yes, that's right. May you say it again? Fretfully. May you say it again, but slowly? The word is fretfully. May you say the definition? Feeling distress or irritation. May I use it in a sentence, please? Yes, when the baby was hungry, she cried fretfully. Fretfully. F R E T F U L L Y. Judge, we can't hear you. Unmute, please. Wait, I'm on mute. That's correct. That's correct. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, Lily from Chapter Central North York Danforth Beaches. Contestant ready? Yes. Your word is brontosaurus. Brontosaurus. Can I have the definition, please? Yes, the previous term for a patasaurus, a large herbivorous dinosaur. Brontosaurus. B-R-O-N-T-O-S-A-U-R-O-S, Brontosaurus? Incorrect.
Mark from Chapter Etobicoke and North York West. Contestant ready? You're muted, contestant. Yes. Your word is brontosaurus. Could you repeat the word? Brontosaurus. Is it a proper noun? No, it is not. Could, could you give me the definition of the word, please? Yes, it is the previous term for apatosaurus, a large herbivorous dinosaur. Could you use it in a sentence, please? The massive brontosaurus was a plant-eating dinosaur. Could you repeat the word, please? Brontosaurus. B-R-O-N-T-O-S-A-U-R-U-S. That's correct. <laughs> Aria from Chapter Kitchener and Waterloo. Contestant ready? You're on mute, contestant. Ready? Yes. Your word is elocution. Elocution. E L L E C U T I O N. Incorrect. Okay. Artha from Chapter Maple Woodbridge, Richmond Hill, Thornhill. Contestant ready? Contestant, you're on mute. Oh yeah, sorry. That's all right. Your word is elocution. May I please repeat the word? Elocution. May I please have the definition? Yes, it is the skill of clear and expressive speech. What is the part of speech? It's a common noun. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Elocution. The word is elocution. Okay. May you please use it in a sentence? Yes. The winner of the speech arts competition had excellent elocution. Elocution. E-L-O-C-U-T-I-O-N. Elocution. Correct. Thank you. Okay, so... Um, this concludes our third tiebreaker round. Returning to the stage to the audience are Lily from Chapter Central North York Danforth Beaches and Aria from Chapter Kitchener and Waterloo. So now that we have three contestants <laughs> remaining, we will now move into the um, competition for first, second, and third place. We will now begin with Keon from Chapter Ajax Pickering in Ottawa, Whitby. Contestant ready? Yes. Your word is iodized. Iodized? Iodized. May you say the word again? Iodized. May you say the definition? To have treated with iodine. May you use it in a sentence? In Canada, most table salt is iodized. Is it a proper noun? No, it is not. Iodized. I, A, D, I, Z, E, D. Incorrect. Mark? from Chapter Etobicoke and North York West. Contestant ready? You are muted, contestant. Yes. Your word is iodized. Could you repeat the word? Iodized. 
Is it a proper noun? No, it is not. Could you give me the definition of the word, please? To have treated with iodine. Could you use the word in a sentence? In Canada, most table salt is iodized. I O D I Z E D. That's correct. Next, we have Artha from Maple Woodbridge, Richmond Hill, Thornhill. Contestant ready? Yes. Your word is deterred. May I please have the definition? It means to discourage. May I please have the part of speech? It's a verb. Am I pronouncing it correct? Deterred. That's right. May you please use it in a sentence? Yes. We were deterred from diving into the shallow end of the pool. May I please have the definition? To discourage. Am I pronouncing it correct? Deterred. That's right. Deterred. D E T E R R E D. Deterred. That's correct. Thank you. Okay. So this concludes the end of our tiebreaker round. Now we have one student that is um, going to be in a bye for third place. And um, we have two students that will be competing for first and second place. Um, so if we can have the judge to, I guess we'll take a break and then have the judge read the rules before we move on. Well, congratulations to Keon Fernando of Ajax, Ontario. You are our third place winner. So now it's down to Mark Raspopov of Etobicoke and Athar Vivasti of Maple, Ontario. Now remember, if someone spells the word incorrectly, the other person must correctly spell two words in a row to win the championship. So here we go. The first to spell is Mark. Contestant ready? Yes. Your word is ergot. Could you repeat the word, please? Ergot. Is it a proper noun? No, it is not. Could you give me the definition of the word, please? It is a fungal disease. Could you use it in a sentence? Yes. Cereal crops can be contaminated by ergot. E-R-G-O-T. Correct. Athar from Maple, Woodbridge, Richmond Hill, and Thornhill. Yes. Contestant, your word is bonito. May I please have the definition? It is a small tuna. May I please have the part of speech? It is a common noun. Am I pronouncing it correct? Bonito. That's right. May you please use it in a sentence? Yes, the fisherman caught a bonito. May I please have the part of speech? It's a common noun. May I please have the definition? It is a small tuna. Bonito. B-O-N-I-T-O, -O, bonito. Correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we will move on to the next round. Um, Mark for, from Chapter Etopico and North York West. Contestant ready? Yes. Your word is refurbish. Could you repeat the word, please? Refurbish. Is it a proper noun? No, it is not. Could you give me the definition? To renovate and redecorate a building. Could you use it in a sentence? Before we moved into our new home, we had to refurbish it. Could you repeat the word, please? Refurbish. Refurbish. R-E-F-U-R. B I S H. That is correct.
Athar from chapter Maple, Woodbridge, Richmond Hill, and Thornhill? Yes. Your word is niblick. May I please have the definition? A golf club made with a heavy iron head. May I please have the part of speech? It's a common noun. Am I pronouncing it correct? Niblick. Niblick. May you please use it in a sentence? Yes. The niblick is designed especially for playing out of sand traps. Niblick. N I B L I C K. Niblick. Correct. Thank you. Mark from chapter Etobicoke and North York West. Contestant, your word is fulfillment. Could you repeat the word, please? Fulfillment. Could you give me the definition of the word, please? Yes, it is the achievement of a goal. Could you use it in a sentence? Yes, winning the championship was the fulfillment of a childhood dream. F U L F I L L M E N T. That is correct. Athar from chapter Maple, Woodbridge, Richmond Hill, Thornhill. Yes. Contestant, your word is lowdown. May I please have the meaning? It is a thick waterproof woolen cloth. May I please have the part of speech? It is a common noun. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Loden. Yes, that's right. May you please use it in a sentence? For the festival, he wore his Loden jacket. May I please have the definition? A thick waterproof woolen cloth. Am I pronouncing it correct? Loden. That's right. May I please have the part of speech? It's a common noun. May you please re-pronounce it for me? Loden. May you please use it in a sentence? For the festival, he wore his Loden jacket. May I please have the part of speech? It's a common noun. Am I pronouncing it correct? Loden. Yes, and contestant, I'm going to ask that you start spelling the word. Okay, Loden. L O W D A N, Loden. Incorrect. Okay. Mark, chapter Etobicoke and North York West. Your word is Loden. Repeat the word Loden. L O D E N. That is correct. So, Mark, you will get one more word to secure the primary championship. Are you ready? Yes. Your word has two pronunciations prestige or prestige. Repeat the word prestige or prestige. Could you give me the definition of the word? Yes. Widespread respect and admiration. P-R-E-S-T-I-G-E. -E. That is correct. Congratulations, Mark. Here are the final results of the primary division. In third place, we have Keon Fernando, Second place is Athar Vavasti, and the primary champion is Mark Raspopov. And Mark is joining us now from Etobicoke, Ontario. So Mark, now that it's sunk in, how does it feel to have won? Extremely amazing and excited. Yeah, did you think that you were gonna do it or what were your expectations? I, I, th I thought I'll get at least third. Pretty good, pretty good. So how do you study for something like this then? You have to study the words like multiple times and really hard, you have to test multiple times. 
Yeah, and what about the words that you don't know? How do you study for those? You, you, you just ask for the definition, put it in the sentence, or know more. More, know the most of the words so that it's easier to spell it. Okay, okay, yeah, try and sound it out in your head and think back to where you've read it before, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So how do you think being in the spelling bee will help you as you get older and maybe even one day when you go to high school? You wouldn't get any errors in your grammar and it'll help you a lot. You will definitely be ahead of the curve when it comes to spelling and grammar. Well, congratulations, Mark, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Now it's time to move on to the junior division. Once again, the top 24 students across the country have made it to the championship. Now remember, these guys and girls are between nine and 11 years old, and the words are starting to get pretty difficult like axiomatic, ultramicroscopic, discretionary, and presynaptic. Ooh, I can barely say these words, let alone spell them. But moving on, they can ask for definitions, parts of speech, and how to use the word in a sentence. These are important clues, especially if you are hearing the word for the first time in your life. And that's exactly what happened to Parnavdeep Singh Kundi from BC. Your word is nacreous. 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 Definition, please. Definition, please. Like mother of pearl. Can you use it in a sentence, please? The inside of an the inside of an oyster shell is nacreous. Nacreous or nacreous? Nacreous. Uh, can you tell me the part of speech, please? Just. A noun. Nacreous. Can you repeat the definition? Like mother of pearl. Nacreous. It's a it's a noun. Am I correct? It's actually an adjective, but. Oh, nacreous. N a c r. E-O-U-S? Correct. Pretty impressive, right? Everyone did such a great job, but the first three rounds were tough, and by the time they got to round four, there were only 10 contestants left. So here we go, round four in the junior division. Contestant ready? Yes. Your word is culturati. Can you repeat the word? Culturati. Um, can you please give the definition? Well-educated people who appreciate the arts. Um, can you uh, can you give the part of speech? Noun. Okay, culturati. C U L T U R A T I culturati. Correct. Okay, and our next contestant is Olive from East York and Toronto East. Contestant ready? Yes. Your word is marginalia. Marginalia? Correct, marginalia. Definition? Notes written in the margins. Marginalia? Correct. Marginalia. M A R G I N A L I A. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Okay, up next is Muscon from Edmonton and Morden, Manitoba. Contestant ready? Ready. Your word is polyrhythmic. What is the definition of the word? 
relating to a rhythm which makes use of two or more different rhythms simultaneously, polyrhythmic. Please uh, repeat the word. Polyrhythmic. P O L Y R H Y T H M I C. Correct. Thank you. Moving on to Ohm from Markham Union Bill. Contestant ready? Yes, ready. Your word is syncopated. Can you repeat the word, please? Syncopated. Can you tell me the definition, please? Referring to the beats and accents and rhythms so that strong beats become weak and vice versa. Um, is this word a proper noun? No. Can you tell me the word in, in an example? He liked the syncopated rhythm of the dance music. Um, can you tell me the definition, please? Referring to the beats and accents and rhythms so that strong beats become weak and vice versa. Um, can you repeat the word, please? Syncopated. So syncopated. syncopated. Correct. Okay. Syncopated. S. I. N. C. O P A T E D syncopated. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. All right, our next contestant is Parna from British Columbia one and two. Contestant ready? Yes. Your word is syncopated. Syncopated. Definition, please. Referring to the beats and accents and rhythm so that strong beats become weak and vice versa. Can you repeat the word? Syncopated. Syncopated. Uh, uh, can you tell me the part of speech? Adjective. Syncopated. Am I saying it correctly? Yes. Sin or sin? Syncopated. 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 Uh, can you repeat the definition? Referring to the beats and accents and rhythms so that strong beats become weak and vice versa. Syncopated. S I N C A P A T E D. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Up next is Linda from Kingston. Contestant ready? Yes. Can you speak up? Uh, yes. Thank you. Your word is syncopated. Can you repeat the word? Syncopated. Uh, can you give me the definition? Referring to the beats and accents and rhythm so that strong beats become weak and vice versa. Uh, can you use it in a sentence? He liked the syncopated rhythm of the dance music. Can you repeat the word? Syncopated. Um, can you give it a part of speech? Adjective. Is it a proper? Is it no. Proper? Can you repeat the word? Syncopated. Syncopated? Syncopated. Syncopated. Correct. Um, C Y N C A P A T E D. Syncopated. 
I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Okay, moving on to Alice from Kitchener and Waterloo. Contestant ready? Yes. Your word is syncopated. Can I have the definition? Referring to the beats and accents and rhythm so that strong beats become weak and vice versa. Could you use it in a sentence, please? He liked the syncopated rhythm of the dance music. Okay. S Y N C O P A T E D. Syncopated. Correct. Sorry, I didn't hear the judge. Correct. Correct. Up next is um, Shauna from Windsor and London. Contestant ready? Yes, I'm ready. Your word is evanescence. Can you give me a definition, please? Can you, can you speak up a bit? Can you give me a definition, please? Yes, quickly fading or disappearing. Can you give me it in a sentence? The Arctic summer is evanescence. Can you repeat the word, please? Evanescent. Can you repeat the word, please? Evanescent. Evanescent. Correct. Evanescent. Correct. E V I N E S C E N T. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Up next is Imogen from Scarborough North. Contestant ready? Yes. Your word is evanescent. What is the definition of this word? Quickly fading or disappearing. May I have it in a sentence, please? The Arctic summer is evanescent. May I pronounce it slowly again, please? Evanescent. What's the definition again? Quickly fading or disappearing. Evanescent. How do you pronounce the word? Evanescent. Is it evanescent? Evanescent. Did I say it correctly? Say it again. Evanescent. Say it loud. Like I, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Evanescent. Evanescent. Imogen, can I ask you to keep looking straight ahead? Into the camera. Thank you. Um, evanescent, E, D, I, N, E, S, C, E, N, T. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. And our last contestant this round is Manal from Scarborough South. Contestant ready? Can't hear you. Yes, I'm ready. Your word is evanescent. Can I please have the definition? Quickly fading or disappearing. Can you please repeat the word? Evanescent. Evanescent? Correct. 
evanescent e v e n e s c e n t i'm sorry that's incorrect the correct Spelling is E V A N E S C E N T. E V A N E S C E N T. Wow, that was a tough round. Words like syncopated and evanescence really gave some people trouble. But you know what, guys? Don't feel too bad because most of us can't spell them either. All right, now the junior competition was down to four people and it took one more round to get to three. In round six, everyone spelled their words correctly, but in round seven, only one person spelled their word right. Contestant ready? Ready. Your word is- Sorry, yeah. contestant. I'm just going to ask you to move a little further back from the screen if possible. And uh, could your hands appear within frame, please? Thank you. Go ahead. Your word please. is yakitori. What is the definition of the word? A Japanese dish of chicken grilled on a skewer. Okay, can you please say it slowly? Yakitori. Y A K I T O R I. Correct. Good for you, Muskin. Now Muskin from Alberta gets a bye into the final and Olive from East York, Toronto East and Alice from Kitchener Waterloo have to battle it out to join her. Here's what happened in round 10, starting with Olive. Your word is seismology. You're, um, you're muted. Seismology. Seismology. Definition? The study of earthquakes. Seismology. Correct. Can I have it used in a sentence? The professor was a world renowned expert on seismology. S I Z E M O L O G Y. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. All right, so we're going to keep going. Um, Alice from Kitchener Waterloo is next. Ready, Alice? Yes. Say, thank you. Your word is seismology. Seismology? Correct. Could I have the definition, please? The study of earthquakes. Seismology, right? Yes. S-E-I-S-M-O-L-O-G-Y. Correct. That was so close. Well done to the both of you. So now we're ready for the final championship matchup in the junior division. It's Muskin Jiwa versus Alice Fur. Muskan ready? Yes, we're ready. Great. Your word is Farago. What's the definition? A confused mix mixture. Contestant, please again, move back from the screen with your hands visible. With your hands visible. F-A-R-R-A-G-O, Frago. Correct. Okay, Alice from Kitchener Waterloo, you're next. Alice, ready? Yes. Your word is euphonium. Euphonium? Euphonium. Could I have the definition, please? Sure. A brass musical instrument. Could I 
Could you please use it in a sentence? The euphonium resembles a tuba. E U P H O N I U M? Correct. Okay. Move scan. Ready? Ready. I have to hear you say yes. Ready? Yes. Your your word is herpetology. Please repeat the word. Herpetology. What's the definition? The study of reptiles and amphibians. Can I have it in the sentence? The herpetology major focused on the study of lizards. H E R P E T O L O G Y. Correct. Alice? Yes. Your word is volute. Volute? Volute. Could I have the definition, please? Relating to a spiral curve. Could you please use it in a sentence? An iconic column has a volute cap. Volute. E-O-L-T-E. -E. Sorry, participant, you cut out. Can you please respell the same way? V O L. U T E. That's correct. Back to Moosecan. Yes. Your word is quadrivious. Can I please have the definition? Going in four directions or in every direction. What is the part of speech? Adjective. Please repeat this word. Quad, quadrivious. Repeat. Quadrivious. Contestant, please keep your hands in frame. Q-U-A-D-R-I-V-I-O-U-S. That's correct. Thank you. Alice? Yes. Your word is a homophone, sear, definition, dry or withered vegetation, sentence. After the drought, the pasture land became very sear, sear. Sear? Sear. Could you please repeat the word? Seer. Seer? Correct. S E R E Correct. Back to you, Muscan. Your word is gubernatorial. Repeat, please. Gubernatorial. Can you please say it slowly? Gubernatorial. What's the definition? Relating to a governor particularly of an American state. Contesting again, please keep your hands in view of the officials. Can you please repeat the word? Gubernatorial. G-U-B-E-R-N-A-T-O-R-I-A-L. 
Correct. Thank you. Back to you, Alice. Okay. Your word is has two correct pronunciations. Hansard, Hansard. Hansard? Hansard, Hansard. Back to definition, please. The official record of debates in the parliaments of some countries in the British Commonwealth. Could you please use it in a sentence? The public is able to purchase copies of Hansard. Hansard? Hansard. H A N S A R D. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Okay, back to Buscan. Buscan, your word has two correct pronunciations Hansard, Hansard. Definition. Sorry, I don't say that until you ask. So, <laughs> so uh, can I have the definition, please? Thanks for asking. The official record of debates in the parliament of some countries in the British Commonwealth. Capital H-A-N-S-A-R-D. Hansard. Correct. Woo! Now, one more, one word needs to be done in order to be the champion. Mm -hmm. Your word is espresso. Okay, so can I have the definition? A type of strong black coffee, which I need right now. Hands in frame, please, again, Muscan. Can you repeat, please? Espresso. E-S-P-R-E-S-S-O. That's correct. Yes! Congratulations to all the contestants in the junior division. Here are our winners. In third place, Olive Riley from Toronto, Ontario. In second, Alice Fur from Kitchener, Waterloo. And our champion, Muskin Jiwa from Edmonton with the winning word, espresso. And joining me now is Muskin. Now, I want to ask you, I'm assuming you don't drink or order espresso very often. So how did you know how to spell that word? Yeah, I've just seen it um, wherever I go. Um, whenever I go to like Starbucks or Tim Hortons, I always see espresso. Um, it was all around me, so that's how I knew how to spell it right away. You're very perceptive. So how did it feel to win? I felt very happy and very ecstatic because um, not only was I there just because of my efforts, but I was there to make my um, region, my chapter, Edmonton, proud and i was so happy that i could finally do justice to that and have this opportunity and actually use this opportunity well to make my city proud so i felt happy that i could make my family proud my city proud and i think it's all due to the almighty um himself that uh, i am where i am and i felt i couldn't really believe it that um i had won from third place last year in the junior category to first place it is a really big jump and I feel really happy that I am here now. Well, that's definitely a big jump, and I'm sure your family and friends are very proud. And would you have any tips for any other kids who were watching you? Because I'm sure you inspired a lot of people to maybe want to try the spelling bee one day. Yes, I think it's amazing that many um, kids and just people in general want to um, make their spelling abilities, uh, they want to improve their spelling abilities. And what I would want to say is that definitely if spelling is your interest, then go into it. Um, some tips that, and advice that I would like to give is start reading books. Um, go and get a variety of books just from your library and start exploring those. But this is very essential with a dictionary at your side. So if you find any words you're doubting or any con concepts that you're doubting that, oh, it may be a potential word, you can go and look it up in your dictionary and write it down. So this way, knowledge will be gained in a fun way because as an avid reader myself, um, reading is a very immersive and fun thing to do. Time just passes by so fast and you're just so immersed into it. So learning can get fun in that way. And I suggest that you start off with books. 
Amazing. Some good advice. And last but not least, this is your last year in the junior category. Next year, you'll be going to intermediate. How much more difficult do you think that's going to be? Um, yes, the difficulty in words, I believe, is going to rise because I'm competing against teenagers now. Um, and um, But I've been looking at some of the words in the intermediate category, and I've found them that they were pretty okay for me. And I think that um, it's a new challenge for me um, because from junior to intermediate itself is a big jump. And um, I think that if I practice hard, I think that it will be more easier for me. But yeah a new challenge and new experience. Well, I have no doubt, Muskin, that you will do fantastic. We look forward to watching you next year. Thank you for joining us and congratulations again. Thank you so much. See you. Guys, we made it. We're at our final event, the Intermediate Division for 12 to 14 year olds. Now there were 21 contestants in this category representing all regions of Canada. And as you can probably attest to, we've seen some very smart students so far, but be prepared to be blown away by some very, very talented scholars. And remember, they can't use pens, pencils, paper, or anything to write down the word first, but they can draw it in the air or on their hand. But in the end of the day, it really has to be from their heads. Now, when I said tough words earlier, I was not joking. This group faced words like aspergillosis and baldachin in the first round. So by the time they got to round three, well, there were only nine competitors left. Let's head there now and see if you can play along at home and spell these words right. Yes. Your word is Colosseum. It is a homophone, so I will give you the definition and sentence. So the definition we are looking for is a large theater, cinema, or stadium. And the example sentence is, the big trucks performed in the Colosseum. May I please have the part of speech? It is a noun. Is it a proper noun? No. Colosseum. May I please have the definition again? A large theater, cinema, or stadium. Colosseum. C-O-L-E-S-S-E-U-M. Colosseum. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Next student, Central North York, Danford Beaches, ER, and LN18, Sahil. Contestant, ready? Um, yes, I'm ready. Your word is Coliseum. It is a homophone. So the definition is a large theater, cinema, or stadium. And the example sentence is, the big trucks performed in the Colosseum. Is this a proper noun? No. Colosseum. 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 C-O-L-I-S-E-U-M. Colosseum. Correct. Our next student is from East York and Toronto East, Sana. Sana. Contestant, are you ready? Yeah. Um, can you scan just to make sure? Pardon? Okay, that sounds good. I think just sometimes when you transfer, it takes a moment to catch up. Uh, your word is autodidactic. Autodidactic? Yes. May I please have this word in a sentence? The autodidactic person never stops learning despite his many achievements. And may I, uh, may I please get the definition? Relating to a self-taught person. Relating to a self-taught person. Okay, and is this, um, is this a proper noun? It is an adjective. It is an adjective. And, okay, M may you please repeat the word? Autodidactic. 
autodidactic. Autodidactic. Okay. May I get it in, in a sentence one last time? The autodidactic person never stopped learning despite his many achievements. Autodidactic. 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 A U T O D I T Wait, sorry. Um, may I please Re resell it. You may, you may retrace, but you do have to give us the exact same spelling that you've already given us. Okay. Um. Autodidactic. A U T O D I. D. A. C. T. E. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Our next student is from Markham Unionville, Krishi. Contestant, ready? Yeah. Your word is autodidactic. Autodidactic. May I have the definition? Relating to a self-taught person. Autodidactic. Can you use it in a sentence? The autodidactic person never stopped learning despite his many achievements. Can you repeat the word, please? Autodidactic. Autodidactic. A U T O D I D A C T I C, autodidactic. Correct. Thank you. Our next student is from Windsor and London, Rishi. Contestant, ready? Yes. Your word is malodorous. May I please have the definition? Smelling very unpleasantly. May you please use the word in a sentence? Although natural gas has no smell, a harmless chemical is added to make it malodorous. May you please give me the part of speech? It is an adjective. Malodorous, am I pronouncing it correctly? Malodorous. Malodorous, M-A-L-O-D-O-R-O-U-S. Yes. Correct. Our next student is from Maple Woodbridge, Richmond, El Tornil, Serene. Contestant ready? You're muted. Can you say something? We're still not hearing you. Can you keep talking? Is anyone else hearing her? No. Contestant, can you move very close to the mic? Still not hearing you. Okay. Um, can we move this contestant out and figure out the tech issue and then we can come back to her? So resource person, please continue. Okay, so Serene, you heard what we're doing, right? Okay, 
Okay, Scarborough North, Salagna, Contestant ready? Yep. Your word has two pronunciations, elucidate or elucidate. Can I have the definition? To make something clear, to explain. Contestant, please move back and have your hands in frame. Thank you. Okay. Is it elucidate or elucidate? Elucidate. Elucidate. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Elucidate. Yes. yes. Can you use it in a sentence? I will try to elucidate what I believe the problems to be. Um, is it a verb? Yes. Okay. It's common, right? Like not proper? Yes. Elucidate. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Elucidate. Elucidate? Elucidate. Elucidate. Okay. Elucidate. Okay. I L L U C I D A T E. Elucidate. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Should I go back to her, Serene? Sounds like Serene has been tech checked, so yes, bring her back. Okay, Maple Woodbridge, Richmond Hill, Tornail, Serene. Hey, Serene. Well, is it all working? fixed up now? Yep, oh. sounds good. Oh. Your Thank word you. is elucidate or elucidate? Elucidate. Oh, sorry. Elucidate. E L U C I D A T E. Correct. Our next student is from Nova Scotia, NAB. Contestant, ready? Yes. Your word is panatella. 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 Okay. Um. Can I get the um? What's it called? Um. Definition, please. A long, thin cigar. Panatella. Um, can I get the part of speech? Contestant, can you move back and keep your hands in frame, please? Oh, sorry. Um, can I get the, um, it uh, is a noun. Part of speech? And is it a proper noun? It is not. And, um, can I get it in a sentence? He chose a panatella from the box full of cigars. Okay. Panatella. P E N E T E L L A, Penatella. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Oh. Our next student, Niagara Region, Lena. Contestant ready? Yes. Your word is panatella. Panatella? Yes. Can I get the definition, please? A long, thin cigar. And am I saying panatella? Panatella, yes. Contestant, hand in frame, hands in frame, please. Oh, right. Panatella. P A. N A T E L A 
Correct. Wow, those words were super hard and the kids somehow remain so calm. I see what they mean when they say spelling bees develop your confidence. So in that round, we saw five people spell words correctly and move on to round four. Then two more people misspelled their words, so only three went to round five. And this means we have our three finalists. We just don't know who will make it to the championship round. So let's find out. Contestant ready? Yes. Your word is anaphora. Anaphora. May I have the definition? The use of a word such as a pronoun to refer back to a word used earlier to avoid repeating the same word. Anaphora. Can you use it in a sentence? An example of the use of anaphora is, Mr. Jones went to the post office where he mailed his letter. Anaphora. Am I saying it correctly? Yes, anaphora. Okay. May I have the part of speech? It is a noun. Okay. Anaphora. Anaphora. A-N-A-P-H-O-R-A. -A -A. Anaphora. Correct. Thank you. Our next student is from Maple Woodbridge, Richmond, El Tornail, Serene. Contestant ready? Yep. Your word is insatiable. Insatiable. I-N-S-A-T-I-A-B-L-E. Correct. Thank you. Our next student is from Niagara Region, Lena. Contestant ready? Yes. Your word has two pronunciations. It can be said machinate or machinate. Um, can you please repeat both of them? Machinate or machinate. Um, am I saying it right? Machinate. Can you say it again? Machinate. Yes. And can you give me that part of speech? Is a verb. And can you use it in a sentence? In his desire to overthrow the government, the general began to machinate. And can you give me the definition? To scheme. Can you repeat the word, please? Machinate or machinate? Machinate. M. A. C H I N A T E. Correct. Okay, so we'll continue on to round six. Wet student from Mark Communionville, Krishi. Contestant ready? Yes. Your word is Mediterranean. Mediterranean, may I have the definition? A large sea between Southern Europe and Northern Africa and the region around it. May I have the part of speech? It is a noun, a proper noun. Okay, can you use it in a sentence, please? Feta cheese comes from the Eastern Mediterranean. Mediterranean, capital M-E-D-I-T-E-R-R-A-N-E-A-N, -E -E Mediterranean. Correct. Our next student is from Maple Woodbridge, Richmond Hill, Tornail, Serene. Contestant ready? Yes. Your word is metathesis. Metathesis? Oh. Can you use that in a sentence? Mixing words like pretty and purdy is an example of metathesis. Um, is it a proper noun? It is a common noun. Uh, can you please define it? The transposition of sounds or letters in a word. Metathesis. Am I saying it right? Yes. M E T A T 
H I S I S. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. It's okay, thank you. Our next student is from Niagara Region, Lena. Contestant ready? Yeah. Your word is metathesis. Um, metathesis or metathesis? Yes. Metathesis. Contestant this. hands in frame, please. Thesis or physis? Metathesis. Oh, okay. Um, can you give me the definition? The transposition of sounds or letters in a word. Okay, and can you use it in a sentence, please? Mixing words like pretty and purdy is an example of metathesis. Can you please repeat the word? Metathesis. And can you give me the part of speech? It is a noun, a common noun. Common noun. Am I saying right? Metathesis? Metathesis. Metathesis? Yes. Okay. Am I saying right? Metathesis? Yes. Metathesis or metathesis? Metathesis. Okay. Metathesis. M E T A T H E S I S. Correct. So Serene Dedina of Vaughan, Ontario finishes in third place. Great job, Serene. That was a really tough word. So our final championship matchup is now between Krishiv Shah of Markham, Ontario and Lena Jalise of St. Catharines, Ontario. Now, you should know, these two spelled it out through 10 rounds for more than 20 minutes. Both had rounds where they spelled the word correctly and rounds where they didn't. And remember, in order to win, your opponent must spell their word wrong and you must spell your word right. Then you need to spell one more word correctly to win the championship trophy. With just a few rounds to go, let's pick up the action in round 14 and find out who claims the title of Canada's best intermediate speller. Marco Unionville, Krishi. Your word is karyopsis. Karyopsis. K-A-R-Y-O-P-S-I-S. Karyopsis. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Correct spelling, please. The correct spelling of karyopsis. Sorry, my screen just shifted. The correct spelling of karyopsis is C-A-R-Y-O-P-S-I-S. -S. Okay. Niagara Region, Lena. Your word is ghrelin. Ghrelin? Yes. Um, can you please give me that part of speech? It is a noun, a common noun. And can you please use it in a sentence? The secretion of ghrelin increases appetite. And what is the definition? A peptide hormone produced predominantly in the stomach. And am I saying it correctly? Ghrelin? Yes. Ghrelin. And what was the part of speech? It is a common noun. Common noun. Ghrelin. G-R-E-L-L-I-N. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Markham Unionville, Krishi. Your word is ghrelin. Ghrelin. G-R-E-L-Y-N, ghrelin. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Correct spelling, please. 
the correct spelling of ghrelin is G-H-R-E-L-I-N. Okay. Niagara Region, Lena? Your word is polemicist. Polemicist? Polemicist. Um, can you give me that part of speech, please? It is a noun. And what's the definition? The definition is a person who engages in controversial debate. And can you use it in a sentence, please? The politician was a passionate left-wing polemicist. Polemicist? Am I saying it right? Polemicist. Polemicist? Yes. Can you please repeat the word one more time? Polemicist. 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 P O L E M I C I S T. Correct. Markham Union Phil Krishi. Ready? Yes. Your word is fluorescence. It is a homophone. So the definition we're looking for is the process of flowering. And the sentence is, in spring, we eagerly await the fluorescence of many plants in our gardens. Fluorescence. 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 Can you please repeat the definition? The process of flowering. Fluorescence. F L E U R E S C E N C E. Fluorescence. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Niagara Region, Lena. Your word is fluorescence. It is a homophone. The definition is the process of flowering. And the sentence is, in spring, we eagerly await the fluorescence of many plants in our gardens. Fluorescence. Fluorescence. F. L. O. R. E. S. C. E. N. C. E. That's correct. Niagara region. Niagara Region, Lena. Your next word is taxonomist. 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 T A X O N O M I S T. That's correct. Congratulations, Lena. Congratulations, everyone, on a great competition and to our champion, Lena Jalise, who I think is just now letting it soak in that she actually won. Krishib definitely made her work hard for the title, and all our winners are incredible young people. And now that she's had a little bit of time to let her win sink in, we are now joined by our intermediate champion, Lena. Lena, how does it feel knowing that you were the last person standing out of all of those students? I'm very proud of myself because I know I worked so hard, practiced so hard for the spelling bee, and I'm really proud that I ended up winning the whole entire championship. No kidding. And I want to ask you about that battle with Krishiv. Is that normal? Does that typically happen? Because it felt pretty intense. Yeah, it was actually, I was really nervous. Like we were going back and forth with different words and it was like really hard, but in the end I made it through. So I'm pretty happy. Yeah, no kidding. So you were nervous in that moment. Were there any other nerve wracking moments in the competition? Maybe like a word that threw you? Yeah, one word threw me off, polemicist. It wasn't necessarily a hard word, but I thought it was a medical word ending in C-Y-S-T. But then I found out it had to do with politics, like someone who's good at arguments and stuff. So I decided to change my spelling, how I was going to spell it to C-I-S-T and I got it right. So I was like, so grateful. 
That's super cool. Um, so obviously you've developed a lot of skills in this spelling bee. Do you think that there are any that you'll carry forward into maybe your job one day? Yeah, so when I'm older, I wanna be an OBGYN, like surgical oncologist. So I know I'm gonna to have to like study a lot of medical words, like spelling and definition. So yeah, definitely. That's amazing. Well, congratulations, Lena, and thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed watching the 2020 Spelling Bee of Canada National Championships. Weren't those kids amazing? And I hope you learned some new words because I know I did. If you know a student who might like to take part in the Spelling Bee, go to spellingbeeofcanada.ca for all the registration details and upcoming events in 2021. And don't forget the Spelling Bee motto, education and perseverance equals success. I'm Jacqueline Dory. Thank you for watching.